What went off air? The live stream itself? Yeah. I know, Kevin. I got it. Okay, we're back. All right. Okay. So yeah, apparently we keep dropping in and out. I don't know what that's about. But we're back. We're here. Now, normally, we open these with a cocktail because it is Let's Celebrate, after all. And we are celebrating today. But we're going to do a little special something. We're going to be making fresh pasta today. What else goes with pasta but wine? I've got our favorite celebration glasses here. They're very big. And we're going to be having one of our favorite wines today. This is from the Old Field Winery out on the North Fork of Long Island in a little town called Southhold. And if you ever, ever find yourself out on Long Island on the North Fork, go there. This is a, one of our favorite wineries, if not the favorite. And they are generational, multi-generational. They've been farming this land and have been here for generations. Uh, the wines are made by a mother and daughter team, Roz and Perry, and it's just a lovely experience, and their wines are wonderful. So we're having a 2018 Merlot today. It's one of our favorites. I think after this start, we're going to need a nice glass of wine. Yes, evidently, I forgot how to push all the right buttons. <laughs> Let's see, first we forget to turn the microphone on, then we hit the show end button, and then we turned off the stream. All right, that won't happen again. Do you want to come and get this? Yeah, I'm coming. I need it. We do need it now. <laughs> Here we are. Happy 2023. Thank you for joining us. Cheers. Mm. I don't feel That's so bad stuff. about drinking at 3.30 in the afternoon. Well, we never felt bad at drinking at 11.30 in the morning. All right. So it's all about pasta today. I'm going to make pasta for you live on camera, so this should be fun. I haven't made pasta in 20 plus years. And when we had this idea for this episode, Phil challenged me, and he said, you've Turn got... It all the way down. It is all the way down, dear. There we go. Is it still on? Barely. Anyway, Phil challenged me, said, you've got two and a half weeks. Go. So I've been making pasta nearly every night uh, to get back into the practice of it. I found a recipe today. So this is my little disclaimer. I'm not Italian. I don't pretend to be Italian. So please, those of you out there who are Italian or claim to be Italian, don't come at me. <laughs> don't tell me I'm doing it wrong or blah, blah, blah. There's lots of ways to make pasta. Uh, your Nona did it differently than your next door neighbor's Nona, right? But it's all good. And again, we're trying to show you the simplest method yeah. so you can make it your own. Yep. All right, so after I've kind of fouled up the uh, start, let's see who's here. Yes. So we have Susan from Rhubarb and Cod. Hey, Susan. And That's a, great. We've got you on the back. That's great. Workout. Yeah, I wish I was doing a workout. <laughs> and we've got Hank. Hey, Hank. Happy New Year. And I think there's just a little bit of sarcasm here. Uh, my first time seeing you live, great job. Thank you, Miles. Welcome to LCTV. All We're right. usually a little more organized than this. And Susan. All right, Suzanne. Hello. Hello. And yes, we're back. And of course, Dixie, yeah, evidently I have been having too much wine. <laughs> uh, Dixie, if you only knew, we haven't had a drop yet. That will change. Okay, and so let me And get... we know Kevin's in the chat, our son. So, hmm. since he was texting you. Anyway, can I get started? Yes, you All can. Right. So, let's bring up the question that started this whole thing. Yes, I, from Ronnie, have tried to make pasta, but it never works out for me. You know what? The first couple times I tried it after not making it for 20 plus years, it didn't work out for me either. I had to keep practicing it. And I threw out a couple batches, which was painful at the price of eggs, but that's okay. This is a recipe that I've settled on and a technique I've settled on. Then I'm going to show you this, and then once you get the hang of it, you can explore all kinds of other options. Now, pasta is made from flour, right? You can use all-purpose flour if that's all you have. I've done it that way, and it's perfectly delicious. Today, though, I'm going to use something called double-zero flour. There we go. Uh, there are all kinds of brands out there. 
Double zero is an extra, extra fine flour. So you get a more tender pasta. I'll need one cup of that. And for our British friends or UK friends, we're gonna be doing a full episode on how to make pasta. So we'll have all those metric measurements too. Just not today, because I'm lazy. Okay, cup of flour. Next is semolina. Now, this is kind of have, again, there are different brands out there. This is made from durum wheat. This particular one is a little coarser. It's almost like cornmeal. Uh, it's not as fine as this flour, but it's delicious. Some of them are a little finer than this. I'm gonna do a 50-50 ratio. So one cup of double zero flour and one cup of the semolina. Well, then here's a good question. Is yes. there really a difference between double zero, all purpose, and semolina? And this came 50. from Facebook a couple days ago. And the answer is, yes, there is. All right. Now, what's great about these recipes is it's not unlike baking. If you're a little over on one or the other, it's okay. Now, I like to mix this up a bit. Mix these flowers together, break up any lumps that there might be. Pretty easy so far, and you get to play. All right, next we make a well. I like to use my measuring cup. Make a good size well. You wanna make sure you have walls of pasta, of uh, flour around. Eggs is next. Now, there are recipes out there that are just flour and water, some are just flour and eggs. So I'm using eggs. I have three I'm gonna put in. Three whole eggs. Again, some recipes say just egg whites, some call just egg yolks. This is just a basic recipe. When you get into some of the others, you get a little different pasta consistency, which is really good for some of the other shapes that you learn to make. But we're just gonna make basic pasta today. I need a little oil next. One tablespoon. So it's kind of like a three, two, one, right? Three eggs, two cups of flour, one tablespoon of olive oil. I'm using extra virgin today. Generous, but that's all right. Now here's the fun part. We're gonna start combining this. I'm gonna break this up and start whisking together. And as I do, it's gonna start pulling in the flour from the walls. And if you flip out a little bit like that, that's okay, that's all right. And you're just gonna start drawing in a little bit of the flour, a little at a time, as you mix this up. And this will start to get thicker. It's already thickening up. So it just takes a few minutes. Now, while I was practicing this, I would get done work, 5.30, 6 o'clock, and Phil would come home, and we'd go downstairs, and start making pasta. So I've gotten a couple times, they didn't work out so well, and I got frustrated. And I thought, nope, it's not going to beat me. So I got pretty good at quickly whipping up one of these recipes of pasta. We, in the last three weeks, we have eaten Heavens. 25 pastas. Just saying. Yeah. It's a bit crazy. You just keep working the flour in. It's very simple. Now some people do this with their fingertips. I like to use a fork at this stage. So my hands are mostly clean. If you think you're gonna leak out, just push it up. So Laura says, right. why make it fresh when you can get all the shapes dried? Well, you know, you can get any shape and flavor of pasta dried, and, and I love dried pasta. But I've learned, or I've relearned, this experience has reminded me, the fresh pasta, there's just something about it. It's chewier, it's, I just enjoy it. Not every time. I'm not gonna give up buying dried pasta to make my own every single time. No, 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 no. But I have to admit there's been something very enjoyable about making this kind of mess. 
<laughs> All right, you see this is getting really almost pasty. Bring in a little more. And just keep working it in. And if your circle isn't a perfect circle, that's okay. First couple times I made this, I had flour all over the kitchen. And Kathy says she likes whole wheat pasta. Oh, okay. It's one of the ones we have not tested yet. No. Um, I've had whole wheat pasta a few times. It's okay. Not my favorite, but I'll eat it occasionally for something different. It's heartier and chewier, a little nutty, maybe. All right. Now, I think it's that time I can switch to my bench scraper. Here we go. And you notice my hands are still pretty clean. I'm going to scrape that off. And we're going to start bringing this in on itself. Like that. Just folding it over and it will just start coming together all on its own. Don't be worried if you see some sticking to the bench scraper. Just wipe it off, it's all good. What we're doing now is we're just really working the flour into those eggs. And Matt says his favorite is lasagna. Mine too, Matt, mine too. My mother always made it on my birthday when I was a little boy, and she really created a monster when she started that tradition because even as an adult into my 30s, she'd say, what do you want for your birthday? I'm not making you lasagna. <laughs> All right, now the fun part, we're gonna get our hands dirty and we're gonna start kneading. So really just bring it together Fold it together. You may get a little worried at this point. It looks like it's not going to work for you. It's feeling sticky. Just keep going. You're gonna to need to knead this maybe 10 minutes, depending on how humid your kitchen is. But usually about 10 minutes will be good. Yeah, this is kind of funny. Jerry says, I don't eat pasta, too much carbs, yet you're here watching. I know, well that's welcome. okay. Yes, welcome. I just push it away, turn it, bring it back. If it starts to stick to your bench, which mine is starting to do a little bit, just spread some of that excess around. And you can always, I kept my flour here, you can always put a little more down. All right, let's see who else is here while you're doing else that. Is here, yeah. You're going to be working on that for a few minutes. Yep. And Kyle, our friend from camp, is Looking here. Good, made a French onion soup. and tuning to learn pasta. All right, Kyle, thank you. I love French onion soup. I haven't made it in a while. I'm due because it is soup season. And Karen's on the way to work. Work, but listening, that's great. Sorry, you have to work. Well, you're working right now. Yeah, this is fun. And Suzanne said it was about the third time that she made pasta. It didn't look like a flower bomb exploded. <laughs> yep. To that point, we did not wear blue aprons because we figured just in case. they would be just in case. Yep. Just in case. What's our time, dear? Uh, I know I haven't been doing this for 10 minutes yet, but. No. Why don't you just talk about, hold on. The fact that you've got another one ready to go. Well, yes. So after I get done kneading this, I'm going to have to let it rest for a good 30 minutes. You can, if you want, make this the night before, wrap it up in plastic, and let it rest in the fridge overnight. Um, but really, just you can put it under a bowl and let it rest on the counter for about a half hour up to an hour, and you'll be perfectly fine. You need to let it rest because as I'm doing this, I get a little more flour out. I'm kneading this and we're developing the glutens. And that's what make pasta stretchy and toothsome and delicious. But then once we get them developed, we need to let them rest. All right, so 
I just got a text message from someone who couldn't Facebook. Okay. How do you know you've needed it long enough? You'll know by the feel. As I'm kneading this, this is getting harder and harder to knead because those glutens are developing and starting to stretch. You want it to be smooth feeling, silky feeling. If you push on it lightly, it should jump back at you a little bit like this is already starting to do. Now this type of flower, the semolina, is a little uh, more coarse, so it's not as smooth as if you just use a double zero, but it will get smoother. From Robin, rather than need by hand, can you use a dough hook in a KitchenAid mixer? Yeah, you absolutely can, but that is one of those uh, times where you could over knead it, which will just give you a tough pasta, really. But then you don't get the feel that you want. So even if you do use a KitchenAid mixer, or whatever sand mixer you have with the dough hook, um, you're probably gonna wanna pull it out and do a couple by hand just to get the feel of it. All right, well, why don't you take a break and go yeah. switch that. Yep, and All right. you get the idea. Hasn't been quite 10 minutes, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it on an old dish here. And I'm just going to put a bowl over it. I'm going to stick it behind me. We're going to let it rest. Now let's clean this up quickly. All right, so while you're doing that, um, yes. let's, what let's are do my favorite segment, and that will give oh. you some time. Um, I'm, I'm ready to go. Oh, OK. Is it 1.30 already? <laughs> Or 4.30 or whatever time? Is it four, oh, is it really? Yeah, it's 5.00. All right, then go ahead. Yeah, you're good. You, Keep going. All right. We got time. Okay. Here's one I made earlier. And Hank likes the fresh, because it cooks quicker. It does cook quicker. It's like three minutes. Yeah. Versus 14. Yep. So, let's bring this excess flour over. And I'm gonna bring over my mixer and my pasta cutter. All right, here we are. Now this has been sitting and resting. I had it in the fridge and I took it out a little while ago. I'm gonna cut this lovely piece of pasta and I don't know if you can really see. Can I do this without a roller cutter or an attachment for a mixer? I am cheap. Yes, AJ, you can. You can actually roll this out with a rolling pin or, so, or a bottle or something, and then you roll it up like a cigar and then just cut it whatever size noodles you want. But the pasta machine makes it a lot easier. If you don't have one of these, you can also use a hand crank one, like we're showing you here, um, which are perfectly wonderful too. This and we have links easier. to both of these in yep. the show notes. Mm -hmm. None of them are expensive. No. The hand one comes from Italy, it's only $50. And this attachment that goes on a KitchenAid mixer or any other mixer that is KitchenAid compatible yep. front, and they're only about $70. So this is nice and smooth and pliable. It's soft, almost like the consistency of Play-Doh, a little tougher than that maybe. We're just gonna cut it into four pieces. Push these aside. I'm gonna smush this out a little bit. We're gonna start on the largest section, which is number one, the largest setting of the rollers. And this is just, again, developing, stretching it. So cross your fingers that this works for me. All right, right through, please. There we go. First couple times, maybe a little tough, and that's to be expected, really, especially with semolina. And you get the hang of it. There we go. Sometimes if it's too dry, it'll tear. This isn't tearing, but it's just being a little, there we go. So one through, and that's flattened it into a sheet. I'm gonna fold this over into thirds, and we'll put it through again. This is really laminating it and just helping it maintain its structure.
There we go. Yeah, it's being a little difficult. Just a little. Well, we had it in the refrigerator. Yeah, but it's been out for an hour. It's because we're live on camera. You know, when we were doing this during the week, it was like zoom, zoom, zoom. But because I'm here in front of all of you, it's like, LOL, no. One thing that can also help is to put a little flour on the actual rollers. We'll keep it from sticking too, if you feel that it's sticking a bit. All right, one more time through. There we go. This is going through faster now. Oop. Tearing a little bit. It's probably because I'm forcing it to. Come on. All right. All right, we'll go a little thinner. We're just going to keep going down, making it thinner and thinner until you reach the thickness that you want. I'm going to take this to... What did we say the other night? Four, Number five? Number four. Yeah. We're, we're going to make fettuccine. Yep. There we go. Now it's cooperating. Yeah. So I like to put this through each setting twice, once from each end. That just makes it even for you. Now don't be worried. Like this is cracking on me a little bit. It's maybe a little dry down here today. It is what it is. Sometimes you can save it with a little water or oil, but this should be fine. Again, you'll get the hang of this. And I have to say, after a hard day at work, it was kind of fun coming downstairs and playing with this for a couple hours. And number four. Now, this recipe I gave you, I used a 50-50 blend of flours. There are other ratios you could use. Some people had already written to me on Facebook saying they like maybe 70% double zero and 30% uh, of the semolina. So, play with it. All right, so that's down to number four. Let's see if we can get this to cut for us through the fettuccine side. Come on now. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. And what I like about it, you know what? These strands aren't perfect, like you get from the dried ones from the factory, but they're not meant to be. All right, we'll do one more. Do you have more questions, dear, while I do this? I do. I have lots of them. All right. And someone has a sense of humor in our group. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear the South Philly Italians already saying, that's not how my Nona does it. Yeah, that really, I'm sure we're going to hear about this. But that's OK. That's fine. And oh, this is interesting. I'm not sure I've ever had this. My grandma always made crabs and spaghetti. Oh, yeah, that's a classic, classic dish. Very delicious. A bit messy, but delicious. Some people make it with whole crab. Some people put just crab meat in the sauce. Some people do both. <laughs> what? Hope, hope, please. What, I what, got what, something's going to make your day. You ready? Yeah. Please, if you want to flip things in a frying pan, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's great, Dixie. Well, then save a step. Just throw flour at him <laughs> while you make the chicken. That's all right. And Hank's asking what makes the pasta the straw color. Um, that is actually between the egg yolks and the semolina is bright yellow. Yeah, when we did it with straight AP flour, which you can do. And even it, with the plain regular double zero yeah, flour. Yeah, it is a little whitish, but the flavor was not changed. It really affected the color yeah. and the texture. And we tried a recipe that used like one egg yolk and then all egg whites, which made a lighter pasta, but it wasn't as rich. It was, didn't have this nice color. My mom made pasta every Sunday and still uses a manual roller. Yeah, a lot of people did. 
and do. You know, for generations, they didn't have these fancy things. Oh, here's a good family bonding one. When I was a kid, my job was to dust and toss the spaghetti or flour to keep it from sticking before it was cooked. Yep. Yep. That's great. Which you'd really want to do. You know, I kind of rolled this in the flour, and that's what you want to do is just to, it'll keep it from sticking together. Now, I'm going to bring this up to the boil. I'm going to roll this. We're on number two now. You see, it does get easier and it does go through faster. All right, what else we have, dear? Oh, uh, let's see who's got going on in chat. Chat's relatively quiet. Let me check our Facebook side. Yep. Okay, we'll hold on that one. Oh, you did. You already talked about this one. Did I? Yes. Oh, my dad had trick me put flour on the rollers and cutters, keep them sticking. Yeah, we actually that was in the instruction book. They recommended doing that, and it makes perfect sense. All right, and here's a nice opinion one for you while you're doing that. What is your favorite pasta dish? My favorite would be lasagna or ravioli. But really lasagna. I love all the layers and combination of meats and cheeses and textures and, and yeah. Yeah, you'll be rolling it out to like a seven to get it thin enough for that. Not for lasagna. No, for ravioli. Yeah. All right, that's number four, so let's cut this. That's a nice long one. Yep. That's enough for the two of us. Oh yeah, we're just having a taste. Now of course it doesn't want to cut. Let's try this. Cut it in half. Make sure the noodles. Since it's gonna, yeah, see this is happening the other night. There we go. And sometimes these little things happen and you just keep going. Don't give up. Don't throw in the cat, in the uh, whatever, in the towel, or get frustrated. All right. Okay, so here are our noodles. Let me clear the decks. You want to do your part while I get set up for the next Sure. Set. Your favorite part? As many of you know, we are big promoters of other small YouTube channels, and we like to feature other YouTube channels whenever we get the chance. So today, I want to introduce you to a fun one. And this is called Cooking with Carly and Little Dude. And Carly's had her channel for quite a while. And they have quite a bit of stuff. And recently, her son has been wanting to cook with them. As a matter of fact, I first saw them Christmas when they did this episode here, the White Trash Christmas Mix which was just a lot of fun. And he's really, really enthusiastic. They have some really good stuff. Carly's been at this for quite a while. Let's see if I can get off this screen. There we go. And she has a lot of videos of cooking and cooking with kids, and we're considering doing that. She's also got a really good website to find those interesting recipes. In each one of her recipes, she has a video that she has created for them and just really stunning pictures. So she also has a Facebook group. So when you get a chance, go check out Cooking with Carla and Little Dude. Down in our show description is a link to her channel. Watch her video. Tell her you came from Let's Celebrate TV and let's promote some other channels. All right, dear, you ready? I'm done. I'm ready, all right. Back to me, Bob. <laughs> Back to you. All right, this is gonna take about three, three and a half minutes to cook, but we need a little sauce for it. Now, I'm not doing tomato sauce today. Sorry, sorry. I'm gonna do a brown butter sauce, which is very simple. In my pan, I have two sticks of butter, and we're just going to, maybe, there we go. I'm gonna push that forward just a little bit to bring All it into right. the camera. 
There you go. Here I go. We're going to let this melt, and it's going to melt very quickly. And we're going to wait until the butter solids start to brown. It happens pretty quickly once the butter melts. Once I get the butter melted, I'll drop in the pasta. And brown butter is this glorious, wonderful thing. It's nutty and complex, and I love it. I love it a lot of things. It's kind of magic. It's one of those chef's tricks, like when they cook things in brown butter. And of course, we're going to have some cheese. Here's, oops, what I'm looking for. And while you step up, Carol asks, can you freeze fresh pasta? Yes, yes, you absolutely can. In fact, we've frozen a lot of the <laughs> pasta that we made. Yes, we have. Yeah. Yeah, it freezes for quite a while. Um, and if you have one of those vacuum sealers, too, it'll stay in your freezer for a long, long time. And Santa brought me a vacuum sealer for Christmas this year, so our freezers are filling up rather quickly. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Yep, all right. Yep. So this is okay. also confirming what we're doing right now. I like pasta matara, the same old tomato sauce. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I, and I, like, I love tomato sauce, and I've been making it my own instead of using a jar lately. Um, but sometimes I like something different, and there are so many other types of sauces. You know, the Italian, or the tomatoes really, are from more in the southern part of Italy. When you get to the northern parts and some of the other areas of the country, they don't have tomatoes as much. All right, so Hank likes the way our pans look brand new. No, they're quite old, but they're good Thank quality. You. We actually have three sets of them. Wolfgang Puck, actually. Um, really good ones. At least three between here yeah, and camp. And our campground and our Campers, travel trailer. Yeah. And now the kitchen down here and the kitchen upstairs. By the way, what do you think of our new artwork and pictures on the sides? All right, this is sizzling, and that's the water from the butter evaporating. It's already starting to smell a little nutty, and this will go pretty quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the pasta. So I have some boiling water here, and of course, oh, yeah. we want to salt it. Lots of salt. I don't mean to yell, dear, but it's getting loud back here. Okay. All right, can you time this for me? Yes, I will. Dropping it in. Give it a little stir. All right. So here's an, a good one on this topic. Okay. I can never be sure when pasta is done since it floats as soon as you drop it in. Well, and that's true. In uh, fresh pasta. Yeah. Uh, fresh pasta, yeah, that floats almost immediately too. You know, when you're using dried pasta, I really follow the instructions on the boxes. If they say cook it for 12 minutes, that's it. You can start testing it and get it to where you want it. Um, you know, the whole joke about throwing it against the wall to see if it sticks, don't do that. That's just wasting. All right. What is al dente? Al dente is a way that people like to cook pasta, especially in Italian cuisine. It means toothsome. It means there's a little, still a little bit of a bite to it. It's a little chew to it. Um, with sauces like this, a lot of times you cook it even a little less than al dente, so there's still a little bit of a crunch to it. It's a little undercooked, and then it goes in and uh, soaks up the sauce. Now this is nice and foamy, and as I'm stirring it, I'm seeing brown underneath. So I'm going to turn this off. And in our experience, with all our testing, the fresh pasta spaghetti is about three minutes, fettuccine four to five at the most. So... Uh, how is, how are we doing with this? You still got some time. All right. You got at least two more minutes. Okay. It's looking lovery. How's your brown butter coming? Brown butter is ready to go. That's why I cut the heat. Brown butter is one of those sauces, it's, it's you're cooking it until the butter fat starts There's to brown. brown. Now you're seeing how the foaming is, you're seeing how it browns pretty quickly. You can very easily take it too far and then it burns and gets black, but this will be nutty 
and somehow more buttery tasting. It's this magical thing. Now this is salted butter. You could do it with un unsalted if you wanted. I prefer in this application to use salted butter. All right. How's a little pasta? Well, it's got one minute to go. Why don't you do a taste? All right, we'll do a taste. But check. Uh huh. Very hot. Thirty more seconds because I want to finish cooking. Now, are you going to put the, the cheese in the butter or put the cheese? I'm going to put the cheese on the plate once I plate it for you. Now, let's get rid of this. Oops, wrong drawer. Here we go. Ooh. What? I almost say man after our own hearts, but we've had so much of this. I eat pasta every day. You know, a lot of people do, and they eat very small portions of it. It's not uncommon in Italy for someone to have pasta, or Italians here, Italian-Americans, they eat pasta, but just not a great big thumping plate of it, like we usually do when we have it. All right, David All right. says, what do you think of gluten-free pasta? Um, you know, I don't know, I've never had it. I understand a lot of the gluten-free products are very delicious, uh, so why not? If, if you have a gluten issue, then yeah, try it. I'm gonna put a little bit of the pasta water in, carefully. It's just gonna help thicken it a little bit. It's just got all that lovely starch in it. Let's stir this about. Ooh. Get all those noodles coated. Of course, this is enough sauce for an entire pound of pasta or more than. All right, I think we're about ready to taste, dear. Would you like some? Yes, please. Okay. And Hank says, pasta is the first course in Italy. That's true. It's true. And more importantly, uh, let me get the right screen here. There we go. It is not a plate of pasta with so much sauce that you can't find the pasta. The sauce is a condiment. It is not Yeah, the pasta the is the star. And frankly, if you make your own fresh pasta, don't drown it in sauce. The sauce should... Accentuate it. Mm, that's good because we haven't had lunch yet. So I know we haven't, but of course we're having dinner. I have so here's the other thing. I, I have a turkey cooking upstairs. I have a 22 pound turkey because we didn't have a regular Thanksgiving, and so I said the other day, I think I want turkey. And Phil said, let's have Thanksgiving. So we're having people in for dinner tonight for Thanksgiving. Okay, so now we can tell the truth. What do you mean we can tell the truth? Read this. I saw the test pictures on Facebook. How many test recipes did you make? To be honest, I don't know. I honestly don't. There were nights where I made one, it was perfect. Then the next night something messed up. I would make two or three or four. I, I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Do you want me to tell you how many? Sure. We made 26. 26, okay. All right, I'm gonna make the snow with my last little nub of Parmigiano Reggiano. Oops. You're gonna have to go to a Bagliani's and uh, is Bagley Annie's in Hamilton? Yep. Yeah. Get me some more real parm because this is... Okay, so we were talking about um, doing a kids show. Here you go. Mackenzie asks for pasta every day. Maybe Gampy needs a little assistant for the next homemade pasta dinner. Well, uh, Kevin and Emily will talk about that tonight because we were talking about that anyway. So, um, you know, yeah. But that's going to mean that mom and dad have to be here and be on camera too. So maybe we'll do another live stream. Maybe we'll do an episode. Maybe we'll do both. Well, we were talking about doing a Cooking with Kids series. Okay. So. Can I bring you rhubarb cob? I probably shouldn't have pasta about every day, but somehow it just ends up that way. I'll, I'll come and get it. Okay. Do you want a little pepper or something on it? A little pepper, please? Yes. And I think I'd like a little bit more cheese. Make it snow more for the, me. Yours has more cheese. Just come and get it, you'll see. Oh. Don't question me, Eddie. And Wayne says, hello, Wayne Higgins. Hello, Peter. Oh, Wayne, yes, from Foundry 9. Oh, okay. Hi, Wayne, good to see you. Thanks for joining. All right. All right, let's do a 
a dueling taste test. Oh, okay. All right. We get a Here fork? we go. Oh, wait a minute. Really? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, the wine. You yeah. can't do this without wine, especially our old fields. That would be illegal. That would be illegal. And immoral and all kinds of bad things. All right, let's try this, dear. Things we do for our viewers. Oh, it's not a shame. Can we do this without making a mess? Really? Mm mm. 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 That's delicious. Mm hmm. More cheese. I love brown butter. Brown butter is my one of my favorite things in the world. Here. And in all our tests, we've had way too many uh, tomato sauces, so. Tomato and pesto and. All right, that's good. Let me go back to my station and yeah. see what's going on. Take your nappy. Since I had such trouble starting the show, hopefully I'll be know how to end it oh. correctly. Well, you ended it before it even started. Yeah, second time. Maybe we need some test cases for that, dear. <laughs> uh, so, can, do we see, do, can we do a dev stage and prod test? Yeah. You know, Wayne Higgins is the only person who'll understand what that means. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so you see how easy it is to make fresh pasta, even when it doesn't want to cooperate with you. And especially when you cook it. It's just a couple minutes and it's done. So fresh pasta is often chewier. There's a little more mouthfeel to it. I love it. But uh, kind of like when we did the crab tart recipe and we had so many versions of that. Uh, after today, I will not be having pasta for quite some time. So here's what we should yeah. be having with it. I love garlic bread with my pasta. How do you make yours? Um, that's a really good question. And I should probably figure it out because it seems like every time I make garlic bread, I do it differently each time. Uh, the best I ever made, though, was with my own bread. And I put garlic in the bread and, yeah, it was kind of intense and wonderful. Actually, the um, hold on. Let's see where we are. The last couple of times we just took little focaccia squares of bread. Our local shop right here has an amazing bakery. Yeah. Sliced them in half, melted some butter, put a lot of fresh garlic in it, and just painted it on with a pastry brush, and it was amazing. Well, my favorite way is when I do it with the roasted garlic, like we make for Aspen Hill shrimp. Well, there's another recipe, I guess. Mm. Garlic bread. Lots of chopping in our microphones. Can you tell we're eating? <laughs> I'll stop eating. It's rude. People will yell at me like on the chip episode. So I hope you'll all try and make fresh pasta anyway. What are you doing with all that pasta you're making? Well, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna throw this out after we're done. I'll cut the rest and I will probably freeze everything that we have today because we have a turkey dinner waiting for us. A 22 pound turkey dinner. Uh-huh. <laughs> Anyone else coming over? There's turkey and mashed potatoes and broccoli and stuffing and, and hopefully pumpkin pie if someone brings it like we asked if they can find it or make it. Oh, them. and yeah, the heavy queen that didn't happen. That's okay. okay. Um, let's see, what else do we got? Now we had like, like, we had a whole list of Facebook questions that had come in. Yeah. Actually, we've but, been through most of them. Really? Yeah. And I'll be happy to just drink my wine. More pasta recipes, please. Well, that's something, actually, I want to do a little more pasta this coming season. But again, not just pasta and red sauce. We'll explore some red sauces. We'll make some from scratch. Um, but I, I, I like the unexpected pasta dishes. You know, anyone can do spaghetti and meatballs. Everyone loves it. I love it. You probably love it. But I don't want spaghetti and meatballs every time. I prefer something like this, a brown butter sauce. It's a cooking show. We want to know that you like it. <laughs> well, I do like this, and uh, it, it's uh, very tough to not inhale this on camera in front of you. And We actually have a pet peeve with some of our other YouTube cooking shows. They don't actually taste their own food. Oh, yeah. That bothers us just a little bit. And Rob A says, Happy New Year, boys. Happy New Year, Rob. Yeah, but, yeah I, I like the unexpected pasta dishes, and I, I look for them. I, I search cookbooks, and I search online. Um, 
And, th and that's how actually when we did Pasta Norcina, uh, I happened to come across it in a cookbook. I was looking through and I thought, what? This is wonderful. And then I made my own version. All right. So let's talk about what we got coming up. So let's talk about our next live stream in two weeks. Do you remember what it is? Heavens to Murgatroyd. No, I do not. <laughs> it's called What's in Your Spice Cab. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be exploring spices. What's the difference between a spice and an herb? What are some basic spices you should always have in your pantry, whether you have a spice cabinet or a spice drawer or whatever. Uh, we'll talk about some of the more unusual ones, some of the blends and everything. And we'll also talk about when dry is better than fresh and when yep. fresh is better than dry. And how to use them, when to replace them, etc. Yep. Okay, how about what we're working on okay, today so, and tomorrow in the next few days? Um, we have a... This one's for you, Phil and Dixie. We have a chicken with a Dijon white wine sauce coming up. Uh, that'll come out this week. It's super easy, and more importantly, it is very delicious. We have, finally, we filmed the sauce espagnole, the final of the exploration of the mother sauces, so that will be coming out. And we have all new cocktails. Um, the next cocktail episode will be a new favorite of mine, the French 75 which is a champagne-based cocktail. With gin. Yes. And if you make it with uh, cognac instead of gin, it's called a French 125. So we're going to be doing both of those. I mean, if you know me, you know I love my champagne, but sometimes I want a little more, and so I made that, and wow. And it's... the Kentucky Derby drink? Oh, are we going to do that? You weren't mm -hmm. too keen on it. Okay, well, we're going to be doing a mint julep. I don't want julep. it, but other people will like we're it. We're going to be doing a mint julep because the Kentucky Derby springtime will be here soon. Yeah, so I have all kinds of new recipes in the works for you. And our live streams, they're going to be really, really fun. Chicken and broccoli Alfredo stuffed shells would be a good episode. It would, and that's funny because I came across a recipe in one of my books just yesterday. Unless, Kevin, you have a recipe and you make it, you could come on the show and or live stream and show us how to make it. All right, so they're bringing pumpkin pie and white wine. Okay. You're going to need a lot for 22 pounds of turkey. We have lots of other white wines, too, so that's great. Plus, I'm drinking all the red today, so. Because we spend stupid amounts of money on wine, and we drive five and a half hours to our favorite wineries in Long Island. We do. It's true. So how are we doing on time, dear? Got about three or four more minutes. Okay. Um, I don't think anybody's on Facebook. They're pretty much done. It's pretty quiet in chat. So what should we talk about? Oops. <laughs> Let's get the right screens. Oh, again you with the screens. Yeah, I, I know. Well, you bought me my new, new desk and I can't find anything now. I know, I know. I bought you this new desk for Christmas that you had to have. If you can take a minute and like this episode, it really helps. Leave us a comment. Oh. Matter of fact, in the comment section, if you've got an idea for a live stream, let us know. We that are always great. That reminds me. Uh, we're going to be on Instagram. We have an Instagram account, apparently. Now we have two, because I just opened one the other day. But we're going to start Instagramming more, so you can start following us there. You can follow us on Facebook. And look for some changes to our YouTube page because we are redoing the introduction video. It's fine, it just needs a little updating. So we'll be doing that this week and putting that out there. And we'll also, next time you see our live stream, we'll have some new colored backgrounds and I'm pretty happy with our new pictures that we have up on the wall, I really like them. And I need to get them for the upstairs kitchen now. Yep, I don't know what the backgrounds we'll have, but we'll see, it'll be getting close to Valentine's Day. Yep. Next time, that's the next big holiday. All right, I All right. think we're done. I'm about done because I need to just put my face down into this pasta. And... Well, go ahead, I'll zoom in. Go ahead, yeah, right. good, put your yeah. head down there. Thank go, you, dear. go ahead, thank you. Go oh. for it. Uh -huh. Can't egg him in, huh? Nope. And besides, no, not even have, with more wine, you have stuff to do. You have an upstairs to vacuum, you have a table to set, blah, blah, blah. 
blah, blah, blah. I have potatoes to peel and potatoes to mash and broccoli to get ready and... What do you think we are, Phil and Dixie? What does that mean? Uh, that took over Chicken, fl yes. No, we're having turkey and then you're going to have a turkey to cut. All right. It's always your job to carve the turkey. Come on, Facebook. Get there. I see the... I see the message from Hank, but it's not here yet. All right. Facebook's Thanks, being a little stupid. There's usually about a 30 second delay between the time someone leaves. There we go. And the pictures are prints on canvas, stretched over wood. And I'm a big liker of unframed pictures. I think frames distract from most pictures. They are very, very reasonable. <clears throat> Of all places, I found these on Amazon, and they were less than thirty dollars. Good old Amazon. All of them. I really like them, and they have a ton of them. So they'll fill up the nice blank wall until I can paint it gray. Which you know, someone needs to earn his turkey dinner. Just say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's let's wrap this thing up all with right. a glass of wine. Yes. Let's toast all our friends. Wishing you all a happy new year. I hope it's a happy for you all. Thank you for joining us today. And you know our schedule. Tuesday's full episode. Fridays, we're going to continue with cocktails and basic skills. And, and if course, you've got an idea for an episode or something you want us to do, send us an email mm -hmm. at info at letscelebrate.tv or check out the website and go there and hit the contact button. And we have some things on the website that are not in YouTube, so you might want to look around. Yep. Nifty little things. All right, until next time, thank you for joining us. Cheers. Hit the right button this time. <laughs>